submitted for the approval of my viewers. I call this story, The Tale of the Book Hall. Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yep, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers. But today, it's kind of fun. I'm kind of combining the two. We're talking horror, but also 90s Nickelodeon. How is that? Well, I'm going to be showing you some newly collected vintage YA books and also kids books. Some of them will be Nickelodeon themed. Others will be kids horror themed. So we'll see what I have. I also found some stuff in my attic from last week, stuff that I actually had as a child that I'll let you see. The treasures that I unearthed. So right after this intro, we'll come right back and we'll take a look at what I found and also what I bought. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back. And before we get started, I just wanted to apologize. I've got a hat on, but at least it's a cool hat. It's a Hogwarts hat. But yes, I'm wearing a hat because I'm all sweaty and gross because it is summer in Louisiana and my freaking air condition is on the fritz. Can you even believe it? I can't believe it. So the air condition people can't come out to our rental house until two days from now. So about a day and a half from now, I should say, actually. I've got an ice pack, got my hat to discover the sweatiness. But yeah, it's pretty freaking hot in here. And I'm sorry, so I apologize. This might be a little bit of a crazy video, but let's get right into it. So before we dive into the books, though, I do want to start off with a little nostalgia. And we're going to show you my Reptar watch from McDonald's. I'm sure it's from McDonald's, maybe from Burger King. I can't remember. But pretty cool. And it is holographic. So there you could see him at a different angle. It's Reptar screaming. So there it is again. Ooh, regular screaming. This is pretty cool. It's from my actual childhood. As you can see, look at the band here. It says Reptar. Also, we've got, oops, we've got little Reptars on the other strap. So, since we're talking a little bit about Nickelodeon today, I said, why not start off with that? All right, so let's look at literally something that I got in the mail today from Etsy. So, look how nicely packaged. That's the beauty of the Etsy stuff. So we'll see, some of this stuff will be sci-fi, some of it will be 90s themed, as I said in the intro. Other things will be horror themed, kids horror, of course, or YA horror. So there's a mix of nice things here, and I like that. All right. I guess I should have undone the ribbon before the video. Okay, and what was inside the package was R.L. Stein's Sunburn, which is, of course, a Fear Street title. And I do plan on reading this this month. In fact, I'm going to read it in about two weeks at the end of June when I'm going to be at the beach. What a perfect beach read this will be. I'm pretty excited. It'll be my first Fear Street read. Ah, I can't wait. Um, and yes, it's rough. Obviously, you could see there's a big old crease here. I knew it was rough. The condition was obviously listed on Etsy, and I bought it for a reading copy, so I wasn't too concerned. Of course, I would like pristine copies, but when I know it's for reading, it doesn't bug me too much. So quickly, I found this at Second and Charles about two or three weeks ago. This is uh, Kenan and Kel Got Game, another 90s title here, uh, and this is kind of neat. So it's a Nickelodeon title, obviously, and I like it, but... I'm afraid to take off the sticker. I hope I can be very careful because literally if this messes up, it'll ruin the whole cover. And another thing I picked up at a used bookstore, this is Wizard, W-I-Z-R-D, lowercase r for some reason, by Steve Zell. I've heard great things about this. It's even described on the spine as a YA horror. So great reviews on Goodreads, and I think I'd love to dig into this. And the cover's pretty neat. You could see there's like creatures or drawings on a cave, and it's like a big hole, and then an awesome bike on the ledge. It almost feels like kids could just fall right over the edge there might be kind of exciting. All right, I got this as a free book on one of my Etsy orders. Bunnicula, obviously it's like a vampire bunny. Dracula and bunny mixed. Pretty cute. I've heard good things about this. I heard this is really cute. So I'm looking forward to that. And I found this at my used bookstore and I was so pumped to randomly discover this because I had no idea this existed. This is Star Trek The Next Generation, Starfleet Academy, Worf's First Adventure. So this is number one in the series. I think I looked it up and there's about 13 or 14 total. I think it's 13. 
but I'm gonna try to collect them all. This was awesome that I just found it in the store. I wasn't a big reader growing up, as I've said in my previous videos. Unfortunately, I wish I was a reader, but this is why I didn't know about this as a kid in the 90s, although I was a big Star Trek The Next Generation fan. So this is kind of fun. It's obviously set back in the day when the characters of The Next Generation were kids and young adults training at the Starfleet Academy to become, you know, Starfleet officers. And this one obviously follows a young wharf. Let's take a look at young wharf here. Lovely. And this one, I was so excited to find it. I was like, oh my god, it's a first printing of Umzadi, which I actually read from the library. So I didn't have a physical copy. I was like, oh, how perfect. It's got raised lettering and everything. I was really excited. And then, check it out, get it home, the cover comes off. So hopefully I could fix that. It's still cool to own it nonetheless. All right, and then I bought Star Trek The Next Generation, Q and Law. Peter David traditionally writes really good Star Trek stuff. He actually wrote the Starfleet Academy book that I showed you guys, the kids book. He wrote that one. He also wrote Imzadi as well. But yeah, I got Q and Law because Q is one of my favorite side characters of the Star Trek The Next Generation universe. Love Q. And finally, the last Star Trek The Next Generation book. I just liked this one. Uh, I'm sure I'd buy a lot more. You know, not all of these are good, but this one's Ghost Ship. Liked the cover. Rough shape, but one day I'll read it. Another bookstore find I was super jazzed about. D2, a novelization, obviously, of the second Mighty Ducks movie. You could see it looks a lot like the movie poster on the cover here. The Mighty Ducks are back. And one of my favorite parts of the Mighty Ducks, the movie... Mighty Ducks 2 is when they go, the quack attack is back, Jack. So yeah, the quack attack is back, but in book form this time, I'm pretty pumped about it. The quack attack is back, Jack. Yeah, I hope this is as entertaining and fun as I want it to be. This is from Disney Press. I've been trying to amp up my Are You For The Dark book collection. So I started to get these books before I was actually into collecting old books. So I have a favorite podcast, but I haven't listened to them in forever. But they're still my favorite because the quality is just super high. And even though I haven't listened in a while, I can't wait to get back and maybe binge some episodes, maybe this summer. So the podcast is called The Big Orange Couch Podcast, uh, BOC for short. And... They are just incredible. They analyze everything from 90s Nickelodeon, including Are You For The Dark. They do tons of analysis of Are You For The Dark. And part of their episodes are sometimes they'll read a Are You Afraid Of The Dark book and review it, kind of like a book club podcast edition. Then they have also watched whole seasons of Are You For The Dark and have talked about that. They have all kinds of different episodes. They even have write your own episodes where they've written their own Keenan and Kel episodes, written their own Rocco's, written their own, hell, I'm pretty sure they've done a written their own Are You For The Dark. But uh, yeah, it's just so creative, so well done. I love that podcast. So when they were going to review this title, The Tale of the Zero Hero, I decided to pick it up and read it so I could go back and listen to their review on the podcast. This one was terrible. I really thought it was a terrible, terrible book. I've got to remove the stickers. But I started with this one and I said, I want to see if the other Are You For The Dark titles are better or worse or the same. So I decided to buy one of my favorite episodes is The Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. It's so strange, but also good and very, uh, it's actually kind of spooky, The Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. So I picked up this one and I haven't read it yet, but I do plan on doing that eventually. And I would love to compare it to the episode because again, this one is the the same name as an actual episode of Are You For The Dark. All right, and then we've got one that I bought because I love hockey. Alas, my team, the Bruins, have been eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm very sad about it. I cried because <laughs> I'm way too wimpy of a sports fan. I'm barely a sports fan. I'm really just a hockey fan. So I wanted to buy something thematic. So I bought a hockey-themed Are You For The Dark book. And this one is the tale of the horrifying hockey team. Whenever the Stanley Cup playoff finals are happening, I'm going to read that this that week, and I'm going to review it in honor of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Even though my team's not in it, it doesn't matter. It'll be thematic. It'll be fun. And I actually want to do a whole project of an Are You Afraid of the Dark read, and I'm going to compare it with a lot of, you know, Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes and do a whole Are You Afraid of the Dark thematic month of content coming up eventually, maybe in a few months, maybe around October. Might do it maybe actually even after October. Maybe I'll just do it for fun in November. 
because it'll still have like you know we'll still kind of have the autumn feels even though it'll be November I might do it then it'd be a good thing to do if any other booktuber wants to do something like that with me if they want to watch some are you for the dark and read some are you for the dark I'd be up for a collab or something I think that could be a lot of fun I think uh, a lot of people talk about goosebumps which is warranted, but no one really talks about the Are You For The Dark books. I've got to read more than the one I read to really judge it fairly, but the one I read was pretty bad. So hopefully the others are good. So those I bought like a year or two ago around that podcast episode, but I recently bought more that are summer themed because I was like, I want to read more of them. So I bought Are You For The Dark, The Tale Of The Ghost Cruise, because that just felt summery cruise summer i guess it goes together then i bought are you for the dark the tale of the shimmering shell now i'm going to keep looking for these in used bookstores or whenever i go back to second and charles because there are a bunch that i want that are super expensive online these were cheap so these obviously aren't the really rare ones there were a whole bunch i saw that i, I really want so i'm going to go back and really keep an eye out whenever i visit any kind of used bookstore again all right, so anyone want to do that Are You For The Dark project? Please hit me up. Please let me know. I would love to do that with somebody else besides myself because it's always more fun with other people, you know? It's freaking hot. Oh, this is the worst. It's so terrible in here. All right, so now I ordered some Goosebump books to fill in the holes in my collection. I could have just waited till I went to like Second and Charles and kept an eye out for these, but I found them for cheap on Etsy and I really want to have all the books because I'm doing a whole read through of my Goosebumps collection and I don't want to get to a certain number and then find that I don't have it. So I was like, I just want to have them. I'm going to buy them for cheap and just fill in the holes for now. And you know, I'll be on the lookout later. I have up until number 50. I'm still missing after 50, but at least I have everything now as of this purchase from one to 50. All right. So this is going in order. I was missing why I'm afraid of bees. This is number 17. I was also missing number 28, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. There's nothing like these old school covers. I love these old school covers. I was also missing number 32, The Barking Ghost. Bad dog, really bad dog, it says on the cover. All right, then we've got number 48, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. And this is one of the ones that came with awesome inserts of trading cards. And this one actually does have the trading cards on the inside. Pretty freaking cool. All right, and then number 49, I was missing Vampire Breath. Okay, so not only was I missing a few goosebumps, I have a few of reader beware you choose the scare so basically give yourself goosebumps books i had number one number three and number four but i didn't have two and five so i ordered two which is tick tock you're dead love this cover wonderful i was also missing like i said number five night in werewolf woods i love these covers and because I remember having this one as a kid, but I can't find it, this is number 15, Please Don't Feed the Vampire, one of the few Goosebump books that I read as a kid, even though this is, you know, the Choose Your Own Scare ones, I, um, I did read this one. And so I kind of want to revisit it, even though I only have one through five, and then I have a big gap, and randomly I bought number 15. It's because of nostalgic reasons and actually remembering things. All right, so here I want to give a big shout out to Cameron Chaney, Library Macabre. Check out his channel. I'll link it below. I'll also link the video up here. He did a whole bunch of recommendations on this video saying if you like Goosebumps, check out these books. So of course these are kids horror books, but they can be enjoyed by anyone of any age. So he recommended this particular one from the Spine Shivers series. He said this one was really spooky and creepy and look at this amazing cover. So once I heard him talk about it, I was like, I kind of want this book. It's called The Grin in the Dark and it just seems really, really, I don't know, scary actually, like in a legit way. And he did say it gave him the spooks. So I'm gonna check it out. And then I picked up because he praised this so highly I picked up the entire Monster Street series that is currently out right now, number one through four. 
he said these are so great and he said people should support them and also they're so cute and fun and they all have a like halloweeny vibe and i'm really trying to collect carnival themed books right now so number three happened to be carnival which obviously takes place around a carnival and cameron actually said it takes place around a halloween carnival so i was like i've got to read this when i do my whole car carnival themed readathon which i'm gonna eventually do that'll be a lot of fun but yes so that was number three that i just showed you carnival then number one is the boy who cried werewolf number two which cameron praised so very highly the halloweeners which i'm going to definitely try to fit in during october when i'm reading a whole bunch of thematic October reads and Halloween reads. And then finally, number four, Camp of No Return. I just wanted to have all four of them because I thought, why not? So yeah, I'm really excited to dig in. I trust Cameron's opinion. So thank you, Cameron. Appreciate your suggestions. I love finding books from booktubers. Uh, because they are way more knowledgeable than me. So, yay, booktubers. So, I found these three, all three, at Second and Charles, and I was like, yeah, the whole thing. So, these are kind of hard to find. They're not first printings or anything, though, unfortunately. However, I couldn't pass it up for literally a dollar each. So, this is Christopher Pike's series, Final Friends. There's three books, and I found all three. Book one, The Party. Book two, The Dance. Book three, The Graduation. So, Second and Charles. I found some good picks at this out of town Second and Charles. Another one I found there, and I'm big into collecting anything with 13 in the title because I was born on a Friday the 13th, as I keep shoving down you guys' throats. I keep saying it over and over again. But yes, I was born on a Friday the 13th, so 13 is a big thing for me. 13 Ghostly Tales. Again, Apple paperbacks. But uh, this looked like a lot of fun. Also, I found this one. I got it off of Etsy for super cheap. 13 Stories of Horror. This is still more tales for the midnight hour. And of course, there's obviously a book that comes before this, but this is the only one I saw on Etsy. So I was like, oh, I'm going to pick it up. It's a point title. I just finished my first point read, Beach Party. It was awesome. I really loved it. So here's two more point titles that I got off of Etsy. One was actually a free extra book from one of my other orders. So that's this one. Uh, the Man in the Woods by Rosemary Wells. And then I have here another Rosemary Wells, Through the Hidden Door. All right, sticking with the point theme, I've got two books here, both by Diane Ho. The first one is The Invitation. And the second one is The Fun House. And of course, I'm going to definitely read this during whatever month in the future. Could be a year from now, could be five months from now. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be my whole fair, fun house, carnival readathon, where I'm going to read all kinds of stuff about carnivals. Might even throw some horror movie watching in there too that is thematic. All right, so the next few things I'm going to show you are all from Etsy. Just cheap things that I added to other orders when I was buying vintage horror, vintage adult horror. I threw some kids' titles in there. Heard good things about Shivers, the series, the kids' series, that was kind of similar to Goosebumps, but different. So I bought The Mystic Spell, again, because this reminded me of carnivals and fairs. I'm going to read it during that carnival read-a-thon again. And this is number nine in the Shiver series, and this is number three in the Shiver series. I've got to remove the stickers. This is Ghost Rider. Just seemed like a cool premise. Love the cover. Other random kids horror. We've got Dead Time Stories, Mirror Mirror. I just thought the cover was appealing, and the store I was ordering adult horror from had this, and I said, why not? Then this one, the cover reminds me of uh, Jack Nicholson, the guy on the cover. This is a Spine Tingler's book. This is Spine Tingler's number one, The Substitute Creature, and this is a really, really, really disturbing book cover for a kid's book. Look at this eyeball. You can see, like, the freaking gross veins parts of it that's disgusting like the nerve hanging off of it that's sick and he's got a whole bowl of them one's got goo on the desk oh my god here's looking at you kid that's what the tagline says i had to get this i had to get this i can't wait to read this it should be a lot of fun if you've read any of these so far please let me know what you thought of them let me know which one i should read first and any of the books that I've mentioned so far, which do you think is the best to start with? I know it's all random stuff mishmashed together. I don't care. Just let me know what you think of any of them. Okay, so now the next few I'm going to tell you about all came from my attic. My dad and I randomly went up into the attic a week ago 
uh, I don't know why, we were just looking for cool stuff. I found a whole bunch of my old kid books, my old childhood books. And so I'm going to save the best two things for last. One's a magazine. Found a whole bunch of boxcar children, which I didn't read much as a kid, but I did read boxcar children. I actually read these books. And a lot of these have like a summery vibe. Um, I'll save my favorite one for the very last. I'm not going to go in order. Sorry, anyone who uh, will be bothered by that. But so number six, Blue Bay Mystery. Again, this is found from my attic. That's why it's not in the best condition. But look, so old school. And look, there's a beach. Totally, totally summery. I'm very pumped up about reading that. All right, then we've got the mystery horse. Kind of dirty. Sorry about that. That's number 34. Number 42, The Mystery of the Missing Cat. Again, it just feels like summertime. I don't know why. This could easily be taking place in spring, but it just gives me summer vibes. This one's pretty beat up. Number 20, The Haunted Cabin Mystery. You think of cabins, you think of summer. You think of vacation. I don't know. So, and finally, this is my favorite one. I just adore the cover. The Mystery of the Purple Pool, and this is number 38. Let me just zoom in here. God, so 90s. Look at his swim trunks, the designs. Look at her clothes, the high-waisted jean shorts. I'm glad high-waisted jean shorts are back. I hate low-waisted stuff. When we went through that period of time in like the 2000s where everything was low-waisted, I was like, no, low-waisted stuff does not look good on me at all. I was like, hell no. And now that like high-waisted is back, I'm like, it is back. My style is back. And flowery stuff too, which is very 90s, that's back as well. Uh, you could find that, like, if you go into Forever 21, everything just feels way more 90s than, like, a couple of years ago when everything was low-waisted and, I don't know, you just couldn't find that 90s flair anymore, but, like, the style has made a comeback for some reason. I found this random title. Uh, it's called Pony Pals, Circus Pony, but I actually think this one's really cool. I love the cover. And again, circuses, fairs, carnivals, fun houses, all that has a very cool vibe to me. I love any kind of story with that setting, whether it's horror or not. So I might actually read this one uh, for fun. It seems super short and easy. I can't even remember if this is good. I know I had a couple of these as a kid, but this is the only one I found in the attic. I also found, this is probably more of my dad's than mine. This is an old school Doctor Who book, and this is number one, actually. And this is the Day of the Daleks, and I'm not a big Doctor Who fan, so I don't really know much about Doctor Who. Uh, I know that's like, I don't know, sacrilegious or something, like to people who love sci-fi. I like sci-fi, but I'm just more of a Star Trek, the next generation person specifically, more than anything else. I also, you know, like some other fantasy type things, but in terms of sci-fi, really Star Trek's like my main sci-fi thing. But yeah, uh, I thought it was cool that my dad had this very old school cool cover. It's not a first printing. This is a sixth printing. It was published by Pinnacle. And it's in rough shape, but I just thought it was neat. So I said, why not? Also, funnily enough, so as a kid, my friend Kristen and I played librarian. So all the books, every single book that my dad had in our bookcase, we took like a post-it note and we wrote the name of the book and a fake like number and we stuck it in the inside cover. In fact, I bet you half of these books have that in the inside cover. Yeah. So again, this is me and my friend Kristen writing and they didn't hurt the books, but still there it's in every single one of these books. We wrote it in every single flip in one. I can't even believe that we did this. No, I just found one that didn't have it, but yeah, it's it was already in three of the ones I just randomly picked out to show you. Another thing I found in the attic, and these are falling apart. I wish you wouldn't have put these in the attic, but these are like mini Star Wars novelizations. So this is The Return of the Jedi and Star Wars. I don't know why I don't have The Empire Strikes Back. I bet you I owned it, but I don't know. It wasn't in the box. They're just falling apart. I mean, like, you could see the spine. Look at that. That's terrible. And also, there's just, like, damage from the heat from the attic. But I just want to show you the covers because they are kind of cool, even if they are in rough shape. So obviously there's Luke. Here's Darth Vader. I love the colors. And here is the three listed on the back. Again, this is in rough shape, as you can see. So there's the one I'm missing, but I'm sure I have it somewhere 
in the attic. I just want to show you a few Disney books from the attic that I found, literally from my childhood. All right, so quickly before we get into the Disney and random other kids stuff, I found this Just Say No book, I guess, to prevent kids from doing drugs. I kind of flipped through this and it's so bad. Oh my god, it's so bad. A book about saying no to drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Let's just take a look at how old school these kids look. This whole cover looks old school. Yeah, this brought back memories because I remember the book cover. I have a very vivid visual memory, so I remember, like, books. I remember toys. I remember, like, the sight of them set up. I remember specific memories with reading or playing library or playing with, actually, my old school toys. I just have a very vivid memory when it comes to, like, childhood stuff. Maybe that's why I'm so attached to nostalgic things. I don't know. Here's one I was super excited to find. A little book basically like a mini kids novelization of It Takes Two, which is my favorite Mary-Kate and Ashley movie that was ever released. They did a lot of movies, including like made for VHS movies, like they just went straight to VHS, where they had all these sleepover parties. So those were just straight to VHS, whereas It Takes Two was a bigger film. It actually had great actors and actresses surrounding Mary-Kate and Ashley. So this was a really awesome movie and I actually still like it. I rewatched it like a year or two ago. It's got a lot of heart. It's kind of got like this romantic angle to it. But yeah, look at this old school, like totally 90s book. I love it. Oh my God. Um, and of course, there's my little library, fake library label on the inside. So let's just take a look at some of the pictures real quick. As you can see. I love this. I just love this. Yeah, I was like so excited when I found this in the attic. I was like, oh my God. All right, so now we go to Disney. So that was the only non-Disney title. The rest of these are Disney. All right, so let's start with these awesome books. I remember this crystal clearly. I had audio cassettes to go with these books. These are 24 page read along book and tape. So these came with audio cassette tapes that you would play and you would be reading along with the tape. And so on the back, you can see there's actual how to read and listen to the tapes as if we needed instructions. But yes, book and cassette, and these kids are having a good time. They're like, oh, let's listen and read. And on the back here, that's The Jungle Book, one of my favorite old school Disney animated movies. I'm big into animation, especially traditional 2D animation, non-computer generated animation. I'm a big fan. This is Lady and the Tramp. Just wonderful, wonderful childhood vibes for me. So this is Dumbo, again, another one. And it's the same illustration on the back with the kids enjoying the tape and the book. Just wonderful. Look at that. Mm, Dumbo. These cute little ears. All right, and the last one is not really Disney, but it is still a book and cassette book. And this one is the story of The Wizard of Oz. It's, it's got some nice illustration here. And on the back of this one, we see Bambi as the example of the book and tape. Love it. And the kids are really happy here. They're like, oh, this is so fun. I love this. Back when you had not a care in the world. That's why I love old school things. Reminds me of such a good time in life. All right, so we've got the Rescuers Down Under, another one of my favorite things ever. I also like the original Rescuers, but I actually prefer the Rescuers Down Under. I think the opening theme is wonderful, the, you know, instrumental. It's a great instrumental. Plus, just there's so many good elements of this one. This one's really funny. It's got a great villain re as well. So, in fact, I'll show you the villain. Here he is, without his hat on, but this is him. Yeah, good times. I, I'm going to do a Disney Marathon Month where I rewatch all, all kinds of old Disney animated movies. Uh, obviously, I'm focusing on traditional animation, not really computer-generated animation. So, you know, I like The Princess and the Frog because that one they kind of threw back to traditional animation. But when you look at something like Frozen, that's not my jam at all. Stuff like, you know, The Rescuers Down Under, that's my jam. Pocahontas here, that's my jam. Pocahontas. And as you can see, there's a whole collection on the back, and I have quite a few of these titles, which I'm about to show you. So you can see Lion King there, Aladdin, Sleeping Beauty, Fox and the Hound. God, the Fox and the Hound. Such a good movie. Very sad. So here's another little golden book, and that is The Little Mermaid. Beat up, but they were in the attic for 20 years. What do you expect? I'm sure my dad put these in the attic when I was like 12 years old. Here is a Disney themed book. This one's not a little golden book, I don't think. Um, this one says it includes a song. So is this one sold with a cassette too? Yep, more cassette and book books. 
you can see on the back here. And these are all Christmas themed. So this one is Beauty and the Beast, One Magical Christmas. The Lion King. All right, let's take a look at one of the inside pages. Look at that. So cool. Love this. I'd love to display these. I've got a Disney shelf back at my parents' house, so I might put them on that shelf. It's got some old Disney toys on that shelf. It's got some, you know, it's got a scrapbook from when I went to Walt Disney World for the first time in college or right after I graduated college. This one's Oliver and Company. Not my favorite animated movie, but I love some of the music in Oliver and Company, so that's what I like a little bit more than the actual movie itself. Really cool cover here. Love it. All right, another golden book, Toy Story. And this isn't traditional animation, but I still like it nonetheless. Finally, the last of the Disney books, we've got a hardcover, The Aristocats, which I love the music to this too. Very New Orleans feel to the music. Everybody, everybody, everybody wants to be a cat. Anyway, and there's like horns and stuff, and it definitely feels like New Orleans when you listen to the music. So yeah, uh, love this one. Of course, the voice of Baloo from the Jungle Book voices... I forgot his name. Tom O'Malley, I believe, maybe? He voices that character. I think his name is Phil Harris, the guy who voiced Baloo and O'Malley, the cat. Wonderful. Now, I'll say the animation doesn't look as good on uh, the inside of this book. I feel like it doesn't really match the movie. See, the cats don't really look like the movie cats there, but on the cover it does. So. All right, and finally, this is not Disney or Nickelodeon or anything specific, but in a dark, dark room and other scary stories. And I found this randomly in the attic as well. Very cool. Very old school. I'm sure I read it. I have no memory of it at all, though. I'm forgetting things left and right. I almost forgot the coolest piece in the whole thing. This magazine I literally found in the attic, Disney Adventures, awesome picture of Robin Williams, like from Flubber on the cover. We got Ursula here. Oh my gosh. And also randomly, we've got Michael Jordan, totally 90s. We've got some Cheetos advertisement on the back. Freaking awesome. All right, so let's see what else is in here. Again, I loved Flubber as a kid. I was obsessed with the movie Flubber. There's a whole video of me and my cousin talking about how I made Flubber, but it dried up because I put it in the freezer. Oh, it's Flubber! Help! Oh. It's Flubber. Oh. It's Flubber. It's Flubber. How was that? Did you see me? All right, so the content says, just goo it. Funny man Robin Williams dishes on his latest nutty role as a professor who invents Flubber. Plus, check out our wacky scientist comparison chart. Aerial Pursuit, do you know what's up under the sea? Take our quiz and discover if your Little Mermaid knowledge matches King Triton's or Scuttle's. From Russia with Love... Meg Ryan tells D.A. about her first voice acting role as a lost Russian princess in Anastasia. And then Toys, Toys, Toys. Our spectacular section has the scoop on this year's coolest, funniest, craziest, and most annoying toys. Page 39. That's, I'm going for the toys section. What is wrong with me? Anyway, this is the beginning of Just Goo It. Let's see Flubber. Land Before Time VHS tape here. We got the, uh, Scientist comparison chart featuring Bill Nye the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Anyway, it's so dumb. Science rules. Honey, I shrunk the kids advertisement here. This is gold. This is freaking 90s gold. And I can't believe there's an Anastasia thing in here, which is, of course, Don Bluth's film. I love Don Bluth. How could that be Disney, though? Don Bluth isn't Disney. But Anastasia is Don Bluth, so I don't understand how that's in this. Oh my god, there's a Star Trek thing in here. See that? Captain Picard there? That's cool. Oh my god, that's cool. Dig a Dinosaur is one of the toys. Sonic Scope, Hot Wheels. A Mars Rover, Hot Wheels. That's cool. Board games with a TV twist. We've got an Alex Mack board game. Zand, Z-Z-A-N-D. 
This is this is marvelous. I could do a whole video just on this. Here's Hanson. Now, call me if they show in sync. Uh, we've got some Rugrats dolls, which I believe I had. Not this doll, but I had Rugrats dolls. And I still have them, but they're all, they're terrible. This can't just be a Disney magazine. This has got to be something else. I don't know what this truly is. I mean, it says Disney Adventures, though. December 1997, by the way. This is volume 8, number 2. So I'll add this to my Shark Marathon. Mary-Kate and Ashley, their adventure set of books, just like they had a whole bunch of VHS tapes like this. This is Shark Encounter at SeaWorld. I don't really agree with SeaWorld, but shark-themed, pretty nifty. I don't agree with the orcas living at SeaWorlds, but that's a whole other thing. Watch my, watch my Free Willy video review. It's like two hours long, but I talk about a whole bunch of orca stuff. This is about sharks, and I love sharks. It's my favorite animal. So, uh, pretty neat, old-school Mary-Kate and Ashley, but I like the It Takes Two book a little bit better. Okay, and the very last thing I'm going to show you, and then we're done, I found this randomly in the attic, my little house friendship book. And it also came with a locket, and I think I remember the locket. So I actually wrote in it, this book belongs to Kelsey Shriver. That's me. <laughs> Hi, Jet and God. I'm here. Kelsey Shriver, here. So there's questions in here about my best friends and, you know, why I said my best friend was named Kristen. I've got tons of videos of me and Kristen. I actually have the videos. I used to own, like, a video camera that hooked up to my VCR. And so I've got all these VCR tapes that have, like, my old footage of myself. And so I was basically, like, a content creator at the age of seven is basically my point. Thank you for watching this episode of Cooking with Kelsey and Kristen. See you next time. See you tonight. I've been converting them recently to digital files, so I actually had them on my computer and showed them on a Twitch stream. But yeah, it says, uh, this is how my best friend and I are alike. We both like pizza. We both like basketball. And we both hate my cousin Lindsay. That is so mean, but it's really written here. It's really written in here. I've got to tell my cousin Lindsay about this. You know, my cousin Lindsay would, like, beat me up and stuff, even though she was three years younger than me. She was kind of, like, always into bullying me. So, uh, she would always want to come over, and then I would try to, uh, I think she would hide in my car, and I would tell my mom, like, Lindsay's hiding in the car trying to come over again. So, yeah, <laughs> we both hate my cousin Lindsay. It's such a great trait for a best friend that she also hates your cousin as much as you do. But I love my cousin Lindsay. I do not hate her. And I'm sure I didn't hate her back then, but uh, I was just mad because she would always beat me up, and uh, it was not a fun time. Because who likes to get beat up as a kid? Nobody. No one likes to have their freaking arms pinched and their hair pulled. Whatever. <sighs> We get along now, me and Lindsay, for the most part. So, uh, you know, time heals all wounds, I suppose. But thanks, guys. That was my little trip down memory lane. But not only did we look at some nostalgic stuff, there's some new cool kids' books to dig into that I'm actually really excited about, like the Monster Street series. Again, thanks, Cameron, for recommending these on your channel. Cool videos. I love suggestions from other creators. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. That was a lot of fun. And again, I'm going to go and cool down, get a refresh your ice pack because this one's melting away so i'm gonna have to get a new one but thanks so much guys hopefully you're staying cooler than i am right now until next time keep on killing it bye